Welcome back to another edition of Colonial Sports Center. I'm Logan Carney, and alongside me is Rashad Christian. Let's take a look at what has been happening in the wide world of Robert Morris Sports. The men's hockey team took on Air Force this past Friday for Game 1 in a two-game set. Let's look at the highlights. Here we see in the first period, action in the first period early, as we see a nice rebound goal there scored by the Colonials. It was very impressive. If I ever played hockey, I don't think I'd be able to do that by myself. Yes, it surely is a team effort as we move on into the second period here. We got a nice breakaway here for the Colonials. And it looks like they're going to tack onto this lead here with another goal. Uh, fast breaks in any sort of sport is the best thing you can possibly see on TV. Basketball, hockey, football, anything. We move on into the third period. Colonial still with a lead here. And they're going to move it out and they're going to score again, getting past the goalie there. It's almost turning on into an onslaught. I mean, they're just firing on all cylinders here. Goal in each period is just really impressive. The Colonials would end up winning the game by a score of 5-1. to one. The stat leaders from today are Dalton Isaac with 40 saves for the Colonial goals. Zach Lynch had three shots, a goal and assist. And Greg Gibson had a goal, assist, and four shots with a plus two on the day. The Colonials would end up winning the game by a score of 5-1. to one. It was their first conference win of the season. The goal scoring for Robert Morris was shared as five people scored one goal each. David Friedman tacked on two assists in the game, while goalie Dalton Isaac had 40 saves on the Knights. The men's hockey team played game two in their series against Air Force. Let's take a look at their shining moments. We got Colonials versus Air Force for game two in the series. Looks like there's some commotion around the goal, and it's a, it's a score. Um, we're gonna move on now to yet another score, I believe. Yep, here we go. Yeah, it looks like Air Force jumped off to an early two-goal lead there. Yep, and uh, we're just gonna make it a what is that? Three-two? Two-one. Two, two-one. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Read the wrong numbers there. And don't worry, the Air Force looks like they get another one. A nice goal there. Look at the quick. Yeah, look at the replay shot. there. It's really impressive. Score is 3-1 Air Force up. Robert Morris just trying to get back into this game as looks like they, they get another score. Yes, yeah, so and that will make it just a one goal game here. A nice over the goalie there for the shots. We head into the third period. Moving into the third period. Moving into the third period, uh, looks like Robert Morris scores again, tying the game up at three. We see the replay there. Really impressive goal. Yes, yeah, so and now that would send the game into overtime. All right, we have Robert Morris tied with Air Force 3-3 three to three in the fourth period. The Colonials had a hard-fought game that ultimately ended in a 3-3 three to three tie. So it pushed their record to 2-0 oh, and 1 on the year. Go light lead Lynch and Ferguson shared the scoring for the Colonials, shooting in a goal each. Um, uh, they led the way for Robert Morris in the assist category, setting up his teammates two times. The Colonials had 40 shots on goal, which is really impressive, 20 more than Air Force did. After a subpar performance from the offense last season, the Robert Morris football team decided to upgrade their coaching staff by hiring former NFL coach Mike Miller. Miller had served as a position coach for the Steelers and Bills before becoming the offensive coordinator for the Arizona Cardinals during the 2011 NFL season. In 2006, Miller was the defensive line coach for the Colonials. He also graduated from my high school, Plum Borough. The Colonials started a two-game series against RPI this Saturday. Let's go to the highlights from Game 1. Here we go, Colonials versus the Engineers. It's a power play, and it's like some commotion over there. It's struggling to score the puck, and 
Yeah, going didn't... to the second period and not being able to score that one. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. Looks like uh, RPI is on the run, and oh, there's a score there. Yeah, it Making looks like it... they're going to jump to a lead here in the second period. Yeah, RMU scoring that one. RMU on the run again with a 1-0 lead. Looks like they're making a fast break, and they score again. Yeah, two-goal lead is dangerous, especially in hockey when you go into the third period. The Colonials were able to edge out a, w a win, winning two to one. Johnston uh, scored a goal for the Colonials. Low Water led the way in the assist category with two, while Caranta and Garvey each had one. Goalkeeper Jessica Dodes, I'm sorry, was able to save 36 shots, 27 more than RPI's keeper this. This one pushed their record to three and three and one. They took on RPI again in hopes of sweeping the series. After the Robert Morris women's hockey team took game one in the two game series against RPI, the two foes returned to the ice last night to play the latter half of the weekend series. Yes, and here we go with the Robert Morris versus the engineers of RPI. We want to see Robert Morris jump ahead to a lead here. Or no, actually no. going to be RPI. The RPI scoring that one. Fortunately for Robert Morris, taking an early 1-0 deficit. As we go in here, we're going to see a, a nice shot there, but a good save there. And they're going to get the puck, but a no. nice rebound, and that will go over the goalie and into the net. And now they're going to see a 1-1 tie here, still in the first period. All right, you're showing really impressive skill as we move on to the next clip. A five on three power play. And it looks like we're gonna have another goal here by the Colonials. Yep, they're able to push the lead to two to one and uh, take an early advantage. And another power play here in the first. And we're gonna see a nice shot there. We'll take a three one lead for the Colonials. Just making great chances of their power play opportunities. Yeah, that shot has some distance to it. I'm really impressed. The Robert Morris women's hockey team would end up winning the game by a score of 3-1. to one. The scoring was split up between three people on the team. Goalie Jessica Dodds ended the night with 34 saves as the team improved to a 4-4 four four overall record on the season. Coming up next, Carter Conroy joins us on set to bring you a special edition of Sports Talk in the Berg. Haley here with some exciting news. You may have seen us on the Century Second on RMUCenturyMedia.com. Wasn't that bad? But starting fall of 2013, we'll be moving to RMU TV with our new show called Trending Now, sharing with you stories from the news that you would actually care about. If you want to be a part of an amazing crew and help to produce an amazing show, stop by the Academic Media Center here at Robert Morris. You, you know you want to, and we will see you <laughs> next year. It was a game to remember for the Colonials this past Friday as they defeated Mount St. F.T. Farwell Dickinson. The seniors were honored. Fairly Dickinson, the Colonials were honored. Their seniors before the game in a nice little uh, senior ceremony as before the game. And now we're going to get to the highlight. everyone and welcome back to a brand new season of Trending Now, the show that gives you the news that you actually care about. Please use this song in your commercial. Please use this song in your commercial. I need the money.
Welcome back to Sports Talk in the Berg. So we start off with the Robert Morris men's football team. They start their season September 1st against Alderson Broadus at 7 o'clock. And we'll see whether or not they can improve on last year's 4-7 and seven record. What are your thoughts on the season? Yeah, um, I think they're going to improve. Um, two years ago they were 1-10, and, and last year they improved on a three-game basis. They got a new offensive coordinator in Mike Miller this year. He comes with an NFL pedigree. Three teams he coached for positions, the Bills, the Steelers, the Cardinals, and he's the offensive coordinator for an NFL team. Yeah. Now, anytime you get that kind of thing, and especially the FCS level, was very impressive. And they got a returning NFC Freshman of the Year at the wide receiver position. That will certainly help Mike Miller, which will lead his offense. I think there will be an improvement next year. I think if you add any sort of personnel, it doesn't add so much of a change because you are still stuck with the same players you had last year. And coaching, yes, coaching is great. And if you have the right coach, it'll take you a long way. But if your players are unwilling to change and fit into a new system, then your team won't have as much success. So in that aspect, I have a little hope. But as far as improving greatly, I don't think it'll actually happen. Yeah, it should be an interesting season as they have a quarterback controversy as well. We're not sure who exactly is going to start, so that should be interesting to figure out as the season moves along. I think anyone who's shown great promise during the training camps and even last year being on the bench and just showing that he's willing to put in the work and practices and outside of you know games and such, I think that's the person that needs to get the shot at starting quarterback. Well, like you said, quarterbacks can be developed through coaching. they got a new offensive coordinator who has worked with NFL quarterbacks, the guys that's been there, and they did it at that level. So hopefully you can coach them and make them better and especially help with the receiving core, especially having a very good receiver there. Mm -hmm. And it'll help the quarterbacks get better and hopefully improve the offense along the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Pirates have been very up and down all year. How do you feel about the team moving forward? Uh, Pirates are sort of a, oh, how do I say this? They're a good team with bad tendencies. And the position that they're in now, wanting to make a push for the wild card spot, is going to be a little tough. However, I think they can do it because looking at the top seeds for the wild card with San Francisco, they have lost three straight games now. And we have the Pirates who just won their game against the Astros 7-1, to showing that they have some dominance because the Astros are a solid team. So just the Pirates showing that they're getting into playoff mode and they're ready, to, they're ready to win games and they're ready to just climb up the ladder. So I think, I think they have a real shot at making the wild card. I can see what you're saying there, but I don't think they're going to be able to do it. They're already two and a half games out of the wild card with just, just under 40 games left in the season. They just got swept by the Marlins last week. It's going to be very difficult, I think, for them to make a push for that wild card and get into the playoffs. But I think anyone can bounce back from a sweep. You know, we um, – I'm trying to think. I'm trying to change this into a different sport. I'm not going to do it now. But any team has the ability to bounce back from pretty much anything. And we saw some teams – like in the NBA, we saw the Cavs go from a really bad team to a championship winner. So if you move that into baseball, we can see teams like the Chicago Cubs that – haven't won a World Series in God knows how long, but now they're a top seed. So it's just like that sort of mentality. Yeah, well, I think with the Pirates' case, um, they've been up and down all year. So I think we can all admit this is a down season. Yeah. But the fact that they're still just two and a half out two of the wild really race. Two and a half is really impressive, yeah. And I think you look back, let's just, just bring it into, you said you wanted to bring it into another sport, yeah. tried to. Well, let's look at hockey. Right. The Pens this year, they're buried in the playoffs on borderline. They called up all the young guys, they got in. Mm -hmm. The Pirates right now are starting to call up the young guys, and the rotation has been better than it has been all year. So I think that we, I mean, I'm not going to say that they'll get in. I'm not going to predict that. But to say they still have a chance, I think you still have to after watching someone like the Pens there. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. Yes, we're going to. Interesting. Okay, so. Robert Morris men's soccer team was a team of almost average. Last year having a record of 10, 8, and 1, just showing like they can win games, but 
not at the elite level yet. They lost Nico Brett, which was who was their best player last year. And the question I have for them is, how are they going to fill the void that they lost losing such a high caliber player? Well, I'm thinking, I mean, obviously the Nico loss is huge. Yeah. I always see it's huge. But soccer is a team sport. Teams win the games. It's not one player. One player obviously helps, and Nico obviously helped. I mean, he led the team in scoring last year, and losing him is going to hurt this team. But look at Messi. Messi is, had, Messi is the best player in the world in soccer, and he has never won an international championship. One player makes a big difference, but it doesn't the whole team. I think that they'll still do good. They will be a little bit worse, but they'll still, they'll still finish around where they were. They have a great freshman last year, Lucas Pantillo. He was second in goals in the team and, f and led the team in assists with six. So those two factors of him leading the offense, they can definitely, they might not, they won't improve, but they can definitely stay around where they were last year. Okay, Carter, any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be very, very difficult, I think, to make up for the loss of Nico. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had 13 goals last year, seven game-winning goals. They only won 10 games. I mean, a 10-8-1 record, it's going to be very, very tough, I think, to make up for his I, production. I don't think it'll be that tough, however, because last year we saw Lucas P P Puntillo, sorry, <laughs> He, uh, he stepped up, and he was the second leading scorer in terms of points on the team behind Nico Brett. Um, I think when you see that level of support when your best player is there, I think it, it bodes well for your team the upcoming year. It's like you know you have some sort of safety net in Lucas and him able to, if he continues to play the way he did last year, or possibly even better, then I think they'll be good. Well, we'll see about that. Next, we move on to it's Tebow time. Tim Tebow, if you haven't heard, trying out on August 30th. 20 MLB teams are going to go to the workout. So that's a big story, obviously. What are your guys' thoughts? Do you think it's good for baseball? Is it good for sports in general? Okay, Tebow is this, it's a touchy topic. Good for baseball in some aspects, yes. It is great for the minor league teams or any team that's going to try and get him on there. However, baseball despite the whole um, steroids and all that use, it's a game of integrity and you want to try to play it as fairly as possible and like just have some dignity when you're putting together a team. So having Tim Tebow who hasn't played baseball in several years, having like a faltering NFL career, it's just do you really want to bring that onto your team? Right. And I know double A, triple A, whatever, all the minor league teams are trying to find talent, but it's like when you're yeah. fishing for just big names, and not taking into account how he's how good he's going to be, then I think that's not good for your organization. Well, the thing about baseball, baseball, it's probably out of all the the four big sports in America, it's probably the easiest to get drafted into, mm -hmm. but it's one of the easily the hardest to actually get into. Yeah. I mean, majority of the leagues, probably about 90% of the people that get drafted don't actually make it to the big leagues. So why not actually give the chance to someone who's a big name who has sell jerseys in double A to increase your ticket profit, increase your profit margin so you can help all the young guys better? Yeah. All I'm saying is the last time he played was in high school as a junior. So I mean, it's going to be tough. Michael Jordan couldn't even do it. So we'll see if Tebow can do it. It's going to be interesting. Well, well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have left on tonight's show. Thank you all for watching, and tune in two weeks from now for some more Sports Talk in the Berg.